Hello everyone, welcome back to a new episode of Saturdays with Dad. It's been a while since we've done one of these. I think the last one we did was like a month ago or something. But we're back. Hi. And we've got a great video planned for you. I've never done this kind of video before or this style, so hopefully it all goes okay. But we're going to be talking about what happened yesterday. Yesterday we went to a festival. This one right here, the New Day Festival. And we had a great time, right? Oh, absolutely. Wonderful. I um, saw some uh, great uh, groups and, you know, some not one not so good. But which we'll get to. Which we'll get to. So this whole festival was really great, actually. I'd never really been to anything like it before. It was very intimate, so you'd see the same people walking around, so you wouldn't really lose sight of them because there wasn't that many people there to begin with. I think it was at, like, max, like, 8,000 people. And I don't even think 8,000 people were there. It was really fun. It was great. They had two stages that went, like, kind of back and forth between sets. But the main stage, stage one, had the main acts, and stage two had the lesser known acts. And there was some great stuff around. You know, it wasn't just, like, a music-y kind of thing. They had a bunch of hippie culture stuff. As you can see what I'm wearing now, they had a bunch of that kind of stuff. And they had like some pop-up record stores, which yeah. were quite fun. And they also sort of had sort of hand crafts. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, so there was like one bit next to the second stage, which was all like arts and crafts and stuff like that, which is very cool as well. So we'll talk about the music first and then we'll get to the stuff that we got at, yeah. the, at the festival. So let's get up the set list. Cause handy, this program had a timetable. It started out with Soft Machine. So the first band we saw was Soft Machine literally as soon as we went in, because they were the first playing. And I already loved Soft Machine, so I didn't need convincing to like them live. Uh, what, what about you, Dan? Yeah, I mean, it, it's great to see that, uh, and one of the a really great guitarists, John Etheridge, uh, was there. To me, I just, from the beginning to the end, was just blown by them. They were just incredible absolutely yeah. incredible i'm a little bit upset how their set wasn't very long it was only about 55 minutes so we didn't get much soft machine uh but they did play i think the majority of things they played was from like newer albums but they did play some old stuff they played stuff from softs and also bundles which is so a couple of album. mike ratledge songs so a bit of variation um and yeah uh, weather was, was nice you could just bask in the, the sun yeah and the sweet sweet sounds that came from the stage yeah it was really great to have great weather as well it wasn't like overpoweringly hot it there was a breeze and yeah so that was the first band that played i really wish they had a longer set to be honest like yeah. if they swapped with the um what well, we're going to we'll talk about a bit later, later yeah uh, that would have been a lot better but soft machine were really good and um i might look into their newer stuff now because mm. I've not looked into that yet. After that, we're moving away from progressive rock, more into like electronic psyche kind of stuff with Osric Tentacles. Yes, oh, we, well, this is actually Osric Tentacles electronic yeah. because sometimes when they play sort of bigger venues, they have, a, a you know, like a full band with um, the bass and drums and things yeah, like that. Yeah, so they only had two guys today who were doing yeah. keyboarded kind of stuff. I think they well, had- Ed Wynn, was his name Ed Wynn? Is it? I, I'm not yeah. too sure, unfortunately, but the music was very, very good. I mean, very yeah. psych rocky. Um, yeah, very tangerine dream. Yeah, it was like tangerine dream with drums. Yeah. Um, it was it was really fun, really great to just vibe out to. Everyone was having a good time. Everyone was dancing around, and it was really great because they were making their own sounds with the guitar and stuff like that, which was really cool. Yeah, and with the keyboards as well. I mean, it it is just perfect sound. They 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 are really really good band. But they're a great festival band. Yeah, they play at Glastonbury, I think, quite a lot as well. Yeah. I think they're like a staple for Glastonbury. I think now. they played in the States as well. They've Coachella. Played, Coachella, sorry. Yeah. They played at Coachella a couple of times. Coachella's kind of a shitty festival. Yeah, but it's still yeah. a festival, really. Yeah, I, I've never seen much good stuff come from Coachella, but that's just me. Yeah. But they were really great. Discovered some new music because I knew of them, of course, yeah. but I'd never really listened to them. So having the live experiences was really good. I, I like uh, seeing bands that I've never listened to before because then you get the perfect introduction because yeah. you hear like their mo more popular pieces and also stuff that's like deeper into albums and stuff like that. Okay, so their set was about the same as Soft Machine. They didn't go on for too long. I think they went on for like 50 They could have gone on for a bit longer. I wish they went on yeah. for a bit longer. I would have happily listened to them for like three hours. Like yeah. I could have just sat there for three hours listening to them. It would have been really great. No doubt about that. No doubt. So, I think this is going to be the most interesting one we're going to talk about today. Yeah. So, 
Uh, wishbone ash. Well, in fact, Martin Turner's wishbone ash. And that is no way of denigrating superb musicians that he had with him forming his particular brand of wishbone ash. Um, and they played some new stuff and they played some of the old stuff like Doctor. And of course, they played several uh, songs, several tracks from what I consider one of the seminal ninth, early 70s albums, Argus, yeah. or as uh, Martin says, Argos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually talking about, we actually had the pleasure of meeting them afterwards. But a lot of these groups did was they came, the stage was there and there was like a little fence that pulled out yeah. and the people could come out, like the people who were performing could come out and like meet the fans essentially. Yeah. And we had a great chat. Yeah, anyway, I mean, it's, it was really fun. Very interesting, very nice, very pleasant. Um, got some bass guitar advice. Uh, uh, <laughs> and you've got some good t tips from him and bass guitar, but you know, their, their set again was mag magnificent. When they came on and then he played The, the King Will Come. And I think just, that was the first number. Wasn't that it? was the first number, I and mean, what a number. Uh, what a number. I know we're going to talk on. about this afterwards, but I'll show this now. We've got an album signed. So. Yeah. That was cool. So here's where it took a little bit of a, a detour. So I like folk music. I, I like folk music. Third when it's done, convention, when it's pet, done right. Pentangle, Firth Ball Convention, bands like that. When yeah. it's done right. But there was this guy who came on and he was, with all due respect, he was a talented fella. You know, he could play the violin and stuff like that. But this guy is called Seth Lakeman, by the way, who we didn't know. And unfortunately, we weren't too drawn to the music. Yeah. Uh, a lot of his songs were very, very similar sounding. That same kind of kick drum, boom, 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 with like the, the violin and stuff over it. You know, it was it was all the same. And all of his songs were very depressing. You know, they were all about natural disasters. And stuff like particularly that. on the Cornish or Devon coast, we know there's a lot of people out there. Probably a lot of of Neve subscribers that like them. It just it wasn't us. It's just not us. Um, that was the longer. I think his and, his set went on for an hour and fifteen minutes, and I would have been happy to listen to Soft Machine or Osric Tentacles, but that yeah, long. Or Wishbone Ash. Or Wishbone Ash. It went on for so long. It was the longest hour and fifteen minutes of my life. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just um, as a, as we said, it's just not our cup of tea. Um, we know that they're great musicians. They are really, really good and accomplished musicians. I just find it fairly boring as well. Just I to mean, be I'm, honest, really. Yeah, and um, you know, like uh, I, I prefer my sort of folky stuff, either sort of British early sixties, seventies, or um, you know, John Martin, who's just was a genius, or American stuff like you know Joni and you know. Um, Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young, or Steve Stills and things. Of course, bands like the New Riders. One quick addendum. Now, I didn't see this. Neve saw this. At this point, I think a lot of people were drunk, so I think a lot of yeah. people were just having a bit of fun. That was the first thing I noticed. Yeah. Is that suddenly, this huge crowd of women were running down the hill to the front of the stage. Yeah. It was funny. And that's not... With, with no particular interest to the music, just to cop an eye on him. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. Yeah. You know, this conventionally attractive person Fun playing folk music. Funnily enough, I never saw, when I saw The Dead, I never saw people rushing the stage to get to Jerry Garcia. And we didn't see that when Jethro Tull, Tull came, came on. on. yeah. Which we're now going to talk about. So it wasn't actually Jethro Tull, it was... Um, an offspring of Jethro Tull, wasn't it? Yeah. The Martin Bar Band. Yeah, what was great is they started off with a load of the stuff that they're obviously doing. And newer stuff. And newer stuff. They did one Tull song that I really, really, really adore. Uh, and, and it's a, a new day as I, the festival the name was, was gone. The and it was, um, it's a new day now. Um, what was uh, I can't remember, but, but it's on. It's on stand up. It's a wonderful song, and they played that. They said, "Martin Barsett, we know you've been waiting for this." And then all of a sudden, intro to Aqualung. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, yep. and off they went. And played the, the entire time. whole of Aqualung, the whole of one of my favourite albums of all time. It was really great. Oh, it was. It was fun. Uh, we were going a bit crazy. I was anyway. I was sort of going crazy in a sort of 65-year-old way. Um, 
but I mean, it's just the um, musicians I have. And, and, and the great thing is the, the singer and guitarist with them. Uh, he actually was very were good. Very, very Ian Anderson like. The only sort of thing I would love to have heard was would be more of the flute, you know? Yeah, because he wasn't a flute player. He played the recorder. <laughs> but yeah, which actually weirdly worked. Oh, it did. It weirdly yeah. sounded okay. And I don't yeah. really like the sound of the recorder, but it sounded all right like, yeah. within the music. But that was like the finale of the concert. I think they ran over by about 15 minutes as well. Cause of that. But it was, it was very good. And we had a little bonus. The original toll, toll drummer was there, Clive Bunker. They had two drummers that oh. were, they had him and they had a younger fellow. Well, they had the younger fellow that basically carried the whole of the, the set and then Clive would come on. Oh man, it that was guy really was a fun. great drummer. Yeah. Or oh, he is a great drummer. And Very good drummer. That was, that was it really. That was all that we saw. So all in all, probably one of my favourite concerts. This is the first concert that uh we've been to since the lockdown so it was really great to have like a festival atmosphere and Agreed. seeing everyone having a great time enjoying the music seeing loads of prog bands by the way to the people who came up and said hi to us thank you very much you made our day yeah it was really really great to to speak to you guys yeah and thanks martin for taking the time to speak to us as well after the gig yeah yeah gig. yeah it was like a it was really great as yeah. well yeah that was the concert part the music part um every everyone apart from seth lakeman i really enjoyed yeah i'll probably say the same with me as well yeah and there was a second stage as i said with the lesser known bands which we glanced over at every so often and, and there crank was... shaft were quite funny they yeah played... they were quite fun. oh man they played uh one of the great rock songs to all these people out there who's my age yeah they played um, the Faith Healer by the sensational Alex Harvey band. Man, that rocks that song. Yeah. Uh, that they're really, they were good, I thought. I, I liked the Emerald Dawn. Yeah, uh, Emerald like Dawn a, were good. Those two were my favourite yeah. out of the um, lesser known bands that they yeah. had on stage too. Right, let's talk about the other stuff. So we mentioned there was a bunch of shopping bits around, you know, mini pop-up record stores. Little hippie shops as well with um, some nice clothes where I got this dungaree set. Yeah. Um, and there was obviously some band merch as well, which I'm wearing now. Dad's also wearing as well. We're both wearing the same band today. So I got uh, the Wish Fanatic t shirts. Match. So we'll show those now. Actually, I'll talk about the clothes that I got first because I can do that very quickly. I know this is a prop channel, but essentially I got some hippie trousers and some. I've got this nice shirt, you know? It's got like tassels on it. It's, it's yeah. very like. Very cool. Obviously, we got some t-shirts as well from the, from the gig. So we got the, the festival t-shirt with the line up on the back. Yeah. And you weren't able to get this one. No, it was too late. The Martin Barr t-shirt with the, I didn't realize this till this morning, the dates on the back. Cool. Of the uh, Echo 150 tour. Okay, music time, let's go. So. What we found um, going to the little uh, pop-up shops around the place is there a load of bargains to be had? Oh yeah. Also, um, a lot of these were uh, we got were limited edition. I mean, dirt. I mean, really, really cheap. Really cheap. If you go on Discogs, you'll find that a lot of these are very expensive. Yeah. So we managed to get a lot of these albums for. Yeah, okay, and not, uh, and mint cheap. as well. Yeah, sealed, sealed yeah. albums. Start. What, what do you want to start? Should we start with, with the CDs because there's less of those. So as I mentioned, we got this deluxe version of Crash Argus which they put out during their set list, so I had to get one of those. Found this in one of the pop-up shops. I'm sure a lot of you guys will know this one. Cressida, Asylum, great album. One that's relatively new to me. And we both got one of these. And there's a reason for that. The sign. By because the man he, himself. He couldn't come out and greet us, unfortunately. I think he wanted to, but he had to be somewhere or something. So, yeah. uh, pre-signed a bunch. And we got a couple of those, actually. And we went into one of the... I thought this shop, it was like a hippie store with like really cool clothes and stuff like that. But they also sold vinyl and CDs. So you got like the, the full package. Yeah. So do you want to talk about these ones, Dan? Yeah, well, obviously this is the first one here. And it looks at me. This, I showed it to you. Uh, and it goes, buy me. Well, I was the one that found it for you. Yeah. Quick silver messenger service. This is a lot of the old live stuff. This is from 67, 70 and 73. 
And you've got uh, a couple of these. Um, shock horror, horror shock. Yep. The Grateful Dead box this set. This one is broadcasts. Yeah. This one's at the Fox Theatre, 71. Yeah. That's the CD portion. No, we're not finished. Oh, we have one more CD, actually. Ooh, so yeah. we got... So I think this was midway through their set. They started putting up the Osric Tentacles, like, records and... CDs. CDs and stuff. So this is quite interesting. This is a six-CD set of... Oh, uh, I think it's an album. I'm pretty sure. But it's very interesting. So it's, it's a book as well. It's about their formative years. A lot of it is very... St uh, a lot of it's from the mi early mid-70s. 80s. 80s even, sorry. <laughs> um, and so I think Ed Wynn is obviously the only member of the band left that's from the early stages. But it just shows the progress of this band. I mean, they th that picture could have been taken in the 70s, you know? Yeah. It, um, but uh, they're... they're they're such a good band because they can bark. I mean, there's so much gone. Steve Hillage in there. He was in that band. He was in Osric. Yeah. I didn't know who Steve Hillage was. Yeah. Mm. There Interesting. We go. There you go. It says a lot, doesn't it? Absolutely. Cool. So that is it for the CDs, definitely. Yeah. So part of the same store where we got those uh, Grateful Dead box sets was um, like a little box of like bootleg live recordings. So we'll show you those now. I've opened up my one, but you haven't. Jerry Garcia Band, uh, probably in the earlier-ish times. John Kahn, who was on the great Hooch Roll album as well with Howard Wales. Uh, and so this has got uh, Billy, Billy Kreutzmann on it. I actually, to be honest, haven't heard this yet. So I fine. can't wait to hear it. Um, that I believe Merle Saunders, yes, Merle Saunders. What a great, great keyboards player he is. Um, so this is one, as I say, I can't go too much on it because I haven't heard it, but with this lineup, hey. So next one, this is one that I think dad found, but it's in my pile because it came from my room. This is a Jethro Tull bootleg from 1969. There's the set list there. What do you think of the set list, Dad? Very good. Song for Jeff, nothing is easy. We used to know. I wish they'd played that as an encore. Fleetwood Mac. This is live in Helsinki, and this is nineteen. I think it's nineteen sixty-eight or sixty-nine. Um, this is the Fleetwood Mac. Fleetwood Mac with um, Stevie Nicks and Lindsey Buckingham were to me. Uh, just an American, very good, great American band, but they weren't Fleetwood Mac. This is Fleetwood Mac, and it's got some great stuff on it. Man of the World, um, Albatross, Shake Your Money Maker, a lot of bluesy, great stuff, and Pete Green at his finest. So next one for me, I, this one caught my attention at the end of um, Spree in that shot. But I found this, yes! Bootleg. This is a very, 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 very early, early stages of Yes. This is 1968, beginning of 1968. Uh, some TV stuff, which is it's actually very cool. So this is all stuff from like the first album, and you know, I think there's probably some covers as well on here as well. But this, I've yet to listen to these because these are all stuff I haven't heard yet. But this is exciting. Very, very early Yes. I mean, like, look at that. Oh, very good. Very, very good. I haven't listened to this either, uh, but I can't wait to. I pick this up. Again, the albums are shouting at me, buy me, buy me. This is Dylan uh, with Jerry. And this is a gig in San Francisco in 1980, towards the end of 1980. Uh, and it's got some good, I mean, just like a woman who doesn't like that. Um, Blowing in the Wind, City of Gold, It's All Over Now, Baby Blue, all of this is so good. I Believe in You, um, they're just some absolutely wonderful songs. So, as I say, I can't comment too much about it, but it is Jerry Garcia and it is Bob Dylan. All right, so this is my last one. Dad's got a couple left before we go on to like, the studio album things that we found. So this is a soft machine bootleg from 1970. So this has got stuff from third backwards. 
so we've got, you know, shorter versions of those songs. You know, they're all like 20 minutes on the album, but these are all like, well, Facelift is 18 minutes, but the other two slightly all the time and Moon and June are both six minutes tops. So usually they're about 20. Yeah. But I guess, cause this is a, this is a double live, um, which is actually on a very cool colored vinyl. You got to see this, Dad. Yeah, I've seen this. Very, very cool. Wow. Hey. So that was very, very cool. Uh, and these bootlegs, I think they're most expensive. I think they're all about 10 to 15 pounds each. Yeah. For a double album. Sealed. 15 pounds. Yeah. That's absurd. Yeah. <laughs> so three names. Eric, Jack, Ginger. And I think we all know who we're talking about, don't we? Yes. Cream. And this is a recording um, in 1968 in San Diego, California. Again, like the others, I haven't heard it, but it's green. And uh, I've been reliably informed that this is a fantastic copy, uh, a fantastic recording as well. I and mean, you just for side one, starts off white room. You know, I I'm so glad. Um, Crossroads, sunshine of your love. Why wouldn't you want something like this? Why wouldn't you want something? Cool album cover. <laughs> and it's a great album cover. And it's a colour vinyl as well, which I will look at later. I, we got from a different place. And that just again shouted at me. Pay me. Quick silver messenger service. Live at the Avalon Ballroom, 1966. Gary Duncan, John Cipollina, Jim Murray on vocals, David Freiburg, um, and Greg Elmore, what a great drummer. Uh, this is just fantastic. Uh, they do a version of the, they do a version on this, which again, I haven't listened to, which I, oh boy, will I listen to, of a, Led Zepp, a song that Led Zeppelin covered in their first album. What's that? This one here, Babe, I'm Gonna Leave You. Oh, yes. So they do, um, I'd be interested to hear their version. And, and, and hopefully it's completely different from the Led Zeppelin one because, you know, a classic song has many different variations. Of, variations to it. So next we're going to go on to the studio album stuff that we found. So going back to Osric Tentacles again, the same stand was selling a lot of their records. And this is one that Dad picked up because uh, I think this is one of the only ones we don't have yet. Um, and that was Tenor. And this came out in 1997. 10 pounds for this album, and I've seen their albums go for pretty stupid prices online. Yeah, they're, they're, they're a band that are adored around, uh, not so much here, but certainly in mainland Europe. They adore, adore us, and with good reason, Osric Tentacles, because they are a brilliant band. Okay, so I got a couple of these. These are all albums that I got from the store. So I'm going to go through these very quickly. So we got No Earthly Connection by Rick Wakeman. Completing my Rick Wakeman collection now. Ooh. Bruford's solo albums. And if you notice, who's actually playing on it? Ooh, Alan Holdsworth and who else? Dave Stewart. All right. So, uh, excited to hear that one. And lastly, you'll know this one then. Super Trump. Yes, Quiet good Trump. album. Not, uh, on my favourite is The Crime of the Century, which is great, but that's a good album. That's a good album, very good. And that too, and I think that that's about it. It's the end. So we've been talking for half an hour now, so we'll let you go on with your day now. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you were at this festival, let us know if you enjoyed it or not. Yeah. Um, uh, we personally very much enjoyed it, as you can't tell. Oh, I had a great time. And, um, Hopefully um, go back next year. Didn't like the drive home though. Yeah, yeah, so we had to drive back home at, what was it, 11, 12 o'clock, midnight. It was fun, we were playing some road trip songs in, in the car, it was fun. Yeah. We were playing some good music. Yeah, um, fantastic. I had to keep myself awake so that Dad wouldn't fall asleep. Yeah. Uh, I was able to do it because I had a coffee before the Jeff Tull set because I was starting to get ready to hide it. Um, because that Seth Lakeman set actually kind of bored me. It was soporific, yeah. And I had to have a pick-me-up yeah. so I could actually enjoy the Jethro Tull set. So anyway, enough of that. Uh, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Bye, have a good weekend.